I've been sick the last two weeks, so I haven't been able to film anything, so really excited to get back into it. If you're new here, my name is Chris. I'm building a productivity app called Ellie. I'm basically just documenting me building this productivity app, so that's what this video is gonna be about. I honestly don't know what we're gonna do today, but the main thing that I wanna get done is releasing the public beta of the iOS widgets. If you haven't seen the last two videos, I've been working on releasing iOS widgets for the app, and we're basically ready to get this in the hands of some testers and release a public beta. Today, getting that over the finish line into public beta is the main thing we wanna do. Yeah, and if there's any extra time, um, probably work on one or two other things for the app. So that's the game plan, let's go get started. Okay, so I'm working through all the final stuff that was reported in the internal test Testing. Let me show you guys what was reported so you can see what kind of things come up during internal testing that I just did not catch. Here's one that was reported. What happens when you have an event that's all day? If a user had three all day events, they would take up the first three slots and then the user wouldn't be able to see the rest of their events. So here's the solution that I came up with. I wrote some code, which is pretty easy just to extract the all day events. And now any events that are all day will appear with this little circle and yeah, it'll just show right there. This is what happens when you have two all day events. We basically just show the first one and then it says, and there's one other one there. I think this is a pretty good solution. Um, I noticed that if you had like two or three, uh, it, it just takes up too much of the real estate. I just didn't think it was worth putting in there. And internal testers said that this was a pretty good solution. So yeah, this is what we're rolling with for now. The next issue was something that missed during development. When you add a widget in iOS, they have these preview cards so you can see what the widget's gonna look like before you put it on your home screen. This was something I completely overlooked. Like when I was building the widget, I did this super quickly and just put like a random like hello world placeholder for each of these. This was reported pretty quickly by internal testers who just saw like a bunch of hello worlds here. So I went in, added a bunch of dummy data, and so now there's actually these beautiful previews that look a lot better. You know, I was so focused on the functionality of the app that it's these little details that I just completely forgot about. Really good reason to do a beta test for your features. A last one which was kind of tough to figure out was the app was crashing for this widget right here. So this is the reminder widget. It's basically just like a small widget you can keep to kind of remind you, hey, you got four tasks left, you should go do them. It cycles through a bunch of different background images. I don't know why it's not loading, but um, it cycles through these background images, but it was crashing for some users. It turns out that the images were just way too big and some devices could not handle it. You can get away with a lot more in the real app. So I can load a ton of images, lots of data, process things, and usually the device can handle it pretty easily. I wasn't aware that widgets are super limited with the amount of memory they can consume from the app. Basically even like two megabytes for an image was too large. I just had to make a bunch of changes to the images, compress them and stuff. And now the widget is is way more performant, it's eating a lot less memory, and it doesn't crash now for, for users. That was a pretty tricky one to figure out. Glad we got that sorted before we go to public beta. Okay, so I think we ironed out all the bugs that were reported by the internal testers. Now we're gonna submit this for external testing. So I'm gonna go submit that right now. Now we just gotta wait. Even though it's not going on the App Store, like this is just for testing, you still need to get your app approved by Apple, even for external testing. Usually it takes around 24 hours for them to approve something like this. Once that's done, I'm just gonna share the link with the beta testers and we'll see what happens. All right, so just wrapped up some meetings and, and responded to some emails and everything while I was gone. Good news, we already got approved for the, the public beta. So what this means is I now have a link I can start giving out to people and they can just download beta from test flight. So I just sent out the link. Yeah, we already got nine people to download it, which is pretty cool. Um, and I have a feeling that we'll probably in total get like 20 or 30 people to actually like beta test this thing. I think if everything goes well, we can get this out for all LE users by next week. I wanna take a break from the widgets. Whenever I get burnt out with any large feature, I like to just go to the feedback board, 
find like one or two quick things that I can knock out. It's just a really good break. And luckily there's a lot of small things that we can work on. So this is a pretty good one. So in LE, there's a feature where you can actually estimate how much time a task is gonna take. So at the top of today, you can actually see the total amount of time all the tasks for today are gonna take. This is really good to tell if you've overcommitted yourself for the day. So if you have like 15 hours worth of tasks scheduled out, you probably aren't gonna get to all of them. And that's a good sign that you should probably move some stuff to the next day. I think by default, it's like eight hours. So if you have more than eight hours of stuff, it gives you a little warning saying, hey, you might be overcommitted. That's what the feature is. Somebody actually suggested being able to customize it further and making it so only certain tasks count towards the work threshold. So if someone, for example, puts a task to go to the gym and they schedule it out for an hour, they don't want that to count towards the work threshold. I think this is a really good idea. I actually think I can get this done today. So this will be my break from widgets today. Let's just see how much I get done. All right, and now, oh my God. <laughs> so now it's dark at this table. So I'll be moving to my main desk with monitors. Okay, so let me show you guys what I'm thinking. So again, the thing we wanna do is make it so users can choose which tasks will count towards the work threshold. So something like a personal label should not count towards the work threshold. Okay, so after 45 minutes, got the rough version of this um, already completed. I think I just have to do a bunch of the UI stuff now. Let me show you guys what this looks like. So again, it's just functional. If you go to the settings, there is this new section that says exclude tasks with labels from workload calculations. If you click the button, we have a list of all the labels that you have available. Let's say, for example, we don't want the personal labels to be in this calculation. So we have, again, three hours worth of tasks already calculated here. And I add the personal label, you'll see it appear here. Now, in theory, again, it was three hours. So it looks like this time decreased to 2.15. Now, any task that has the label personal is not gonna be included in the calculation. I believe this is fully functioning now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to style a bunch of this stuff. Right now the label picker is looking pretty bad. Okay, a couple more changes here. Made the styling a little bit better. Still not 100% happy with it, but it's actually not too, too bad. I don't know, maybe I've been staring at it too long, um, but added some styling for the label picker so you can at least search. So yeah, so it looks at least a little bit better. It doesn't look too bad in dark mode. Like I could ship this as is, but I do still wanna try to explore and see if I can kind of redo the settings to be a little more user friendly. Okay, so it's been like probably three hours since I released the public beta. We're at 23 testers right now. So I, I've gotten like five emails about showing time box tasks in the widget. I think it's a big enough concern where I should probably go work on this right now. So I'm gonna go hop into the iOS widget right now and go ahead and make this uh, time box change. Let me show you guys what the issue is here. So for this calendar widget, I originally intended this just to show like Google, Apple calendar events. So Ellie has this time box here and it's really cool. You can basically just drag tasks into to the time box and time box your day. What users are asking for is they want these time box tasks to appear in the calendar widget. I originally intended this to only be like Google and Apple calendar events appearing here. Users actually want the time box tasks to appear here too, even if you don't have the calendar integration enabled. Hopefully this is not too bad, but that's what I'm gonna go do right now. Been about an hour and a half, I was able to actually update the widget, so it now accounts for time box tasks. So let me show you guys what this looks like. Okay, so this is an account with time box tasks only. There is no calendar integration here. Now, if you go to the widget, you can see that these time box tasks appear. One concern I have about this is did add quite a lot of reads to the database. So now this widget pulls LE tasks, pulls calendars, pulls labels. It's a lot, so I'm gonna have to actually monitor that to make sure that it's not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and email everyone who requested this change and let them know it should be functioning now. All right, so really happy with the progress. Beta's going pretty well. We got 25 beta testers, a lot of good feedback coming in, but everything looks pretty stable actually. And the work threshold feature is actually at a good place too. So gonna send a couple emails about both of them. And yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this kind of content, definitely go check out my TikTok. I post a couple times a week about building this productivity app. So if you like this type of content, go check it out. Hope you guys found this interesting and thanks so much for watching.